Hey guys, welcome back. A couple weeks ago I did a video comparing the Federal HST, the Spear Gold Dot, and the Hornady Critical Duty in a four layer denim test. And I had a lot of people that liked the video. I also had a couple people who were really upset at the fact that I said the HST and the Gold Dot failed the test. And they were saying stuff like, you know, who wears four layers of denim and stuff like that. Well, the test is designed to represent a number of different soft barriers. It's not supposed to really mimic someone wearing four layers of denim, obviously, but today I'm gonna attempt to do a more relevant clothing test and a test that is actually designed to represent heavy clothing. And this one's used by the FBI. This is one of their five requirements that they put their bullets through to determine uh, the ability to pass through soft barriers and still expand. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and show you guys the clothing that we're gonna be using. I'll put you on the tripod here. So this is the actual uh, test kit that the FBI uses. I ordered this off clearballistics.com. And this kit includes a three and a half ounce cotton t-shirt square, a five ounce cotton t-shirt square, a layer of heavy fleece material, and a layer of cotton denim. Now we're gonna be testing the same three bullets that I did in the four layer denim test, the Federal Premium HST, the Spear Gold Dot, and the Hornady Critical Duty. Now I do wanna say that clothing is a really hard barrier for bullets to pass through and reliably expand, which is why the FBI and, and other you know, agencies do tests like this. Um, so if you know the bullets pass through this clothing and then do not expand in the block or don't stay in the block and I say that they failed the test, I'm not saying that the bullets you know, would fail in a concealed carry situation or that they're, you know, bad ammo. I, I completely trust all three of these bullets and uh, I would not have a problem using any of these in a self-defense situation. So I just want to clear that up. Uh, these clothing tests are, are really hard for these bullets to pass and honestly I'm kind of expecting um, at least two of these to fail this test. So I just want to get that out of the way before I get into it. Now the gel block that I'll be using is a 20% ballistic gel block and the FBI actually uses 10% gel. Um, in theory, the bullets should stop sooner in the gel block that I have because it is a more dense gel block. But I'm starting to wonder if maybe the density of that is, you know, clogging these bullets quicker than maybe they would in 10% gel. I'm not sure about that. That's completely just a theory I have. Um, but it is harder gel and it does stop the bullets quicker than 10% gel does. Now I'm not gonna shoot the bullets into the bare gel block because I've done that several times and I don't wanna cloud the gel block any more than we have to. So. Uh, we already know what these bullets do in bare gel. They perform excellent. They all three expand between 10 and 12 inches in bare gel. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part and we'll go ahead and get right into the clothing test. All right, so I have the four layers of clothing on my gel block down range. The first bullet we're gonna shoot is the Federal Premium 124 grain HST. And I have uh, two water jugs behind the gel block just in case this does pass through. I'm gonna try and retrieve these bullets. Alright guys, so there's our entrance hole for the Federal Premium HST. And you can see where it went in. Had a decent temporary wound cavity. Continues traveling and stops right at about 15 inches inside our gel block. Now looking at it from here, it does look like it completely expanded. Um, I'll dig these bullets out whenever I get done with the other two. But for now it does look like it completely expanded and it stopped inside the gel block. And it stopped just shy of 15 inches, about 14 and a half inches into the gel. All right, next we're going to do the 124 grain spear gold dot. All right, so our spear gold dot is right beside the HST. It's kind of hard to see. It's the one slightly on top. You can see it came in, had a similar temporary wound cavity, continued going, and left the gel block. 
and went into the water jug. So I'll retrieve that here in a minute, but the spear gold dot passed all the way through the gel block and went into our water jug. And you can see the two bullets side by side, similar temporary wound cavities. The HSTs might be slightly larger, um, probably because it expanded sooner, but the gold dot did leave the gel and went into our first water jug here. So I'll get that out here in a minute after we shoot the third and final round and we'll see what it looks like. All right guys, next up we're doing the 135 grain Hornady critical duty. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the critical duty has a red polymer insert in the front of that hollow point that's designed to prevent clogging and uh, allow it to still expand reliably even after passing through soft barriers. And in the four layer denim test that I did, the Hornady critical duty was the only one to stop and expand inside the gel block. So Hornady critical duty, let's see how it does. So the critical duty is the one on the bottom. It came in, didn't really have much of a temporary wound cavity at all. Continued going through the gel block and actually passed all the way through the gel, all the way through the water jug, and hit our second water jug and is stuck in between those two. And you can see water just pouring out of there. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I didn't expect that to happen, to be honest with you, because the Hornady critical duty was the only one that expanded in our four layer denim test but in the heavy clothing test we're doing right now it performed probably the worst out of the three like i said the hornady critical duty was the only one that stopped in the gel block when we did the four layer denim test and that red polymer tip that's on there worked flawlessly and, and it shed it early on in the gel block and expanded and stopped in our gel so uh, that's kind of interesting. I might actually run that one back one more time and see, you know, if, if we get a different result. I might do that with the gold dot and the Hornady critical duty and see if we can get a different result out of those two. All right, guys, so if I don't put this in the video, I went ahead and shot the critical duty and the gold dot a second time just to be sure that they weren't stopping in that gel block. And the results were the exact same. The gold dot ended up in the first water jug and the critical duty ended up in the second water jug. So. Now what I've done is I have taken the denim layer off of the gel block because as far as you know, a person's upper body, what they're gonna be wearing, like one viewer said, unless you're getting attacked by Jay Leno, the layer of denim is not really necessary. So uh, now we just have the two t-shirt layers and the heavy fleece layer. And I'm gonna see how these do going through those three layers um, without the denim on there. So we're gonna retest the gold dot and the critical duty since the HST stopped going through all four of them. I'm not gonna retest that one, but um, if you see the other wound channels in the gel block on the GoPro, that's what those are from. I went ahead and retested uh, the, the two that failed just to make sure. So now the spear gold dot through the two t-shirts and the fleece layer without the denim on there. All right guys, so our gold dot is the one on the bottom there. And after passing through the two t-shirt layers and the fleece layer, it had a decent wound channel, went into the gel block, and you can see it stopped inside of our gel block. It looks like it's probably between 13 and 14 inches inside the gel block, complete expansion, and it did not over penetrate and go into our water jugs. Okay, I know this ruler's upside down, but this is the only side I can really see it from. And yep, right in between 13 and 14 inches, about 13 and a half inches, our spear gold dot stopped inside the gel block. So after passing through the uh, two t-shirts and the fleece layer, the gold dot performed excellently. It, it looks like it really didn't affect it hardly at all. And 
and that's not much further than the gold dot goes uh, into bear jail. So next we're going to do the uh, Hornady critical duty without the denim layer on there and see how it does. Alright guys, so now we're doing the Hornady critical duty, this time through the two layers of t-shirt and the layer of heavy fleece, no denim. Alright guys, so I'm not really sure which one's the critical duty because it went all the way through the gel block, through the water jug, and stopped in between the two water jugs again. And just like the last time, it did not shed that red polymer insert that's in there that's supposed to come out uh, once it passes through clothing or any barrier. Alright guys, so these are the bullets in the order that we shot them in. This is the Federal Premium HST that went through all four layers of clothing and stopped at about 14 and a half inches inside of our gel block. And you can see that it does have clothing clogged inside of that cavity, but uh, it must have been left open enough to still expand and stop like it was designed to do. And you can see that it didn't completely flatten out like I've seen HSTs do in bear gel, but it came pretty close and uh, did really, really well. All right, and then next we shot the Spear Gold Dot. This one ended up in the first water jug. Uh, actually, it expanded okay. It, it didn't flatten out. Like Gold Dots a lot of the time completely flatten out and um, expand really nicely. This one didn't do that, but it did have some expansion on it. And once again, you can see the clothing stuck inside that bullet. And that one ended up in the first water jug. And this is our first Hornady critical duty that we shot. And you can see just very poor expansion. And this one ended up in between the first and the second water jug, kind of lodged in between the two. So when it hit that water jug, it still had quite a bit left on it. And then after that, I decided to remove the denim layer and shoot the gold dot and the critical duty again. And this is our gold dot, and you can see that it flattened out quite a bit more and expanded quite a bit more uh, than it did going through all four layers. So when I removed the denim, the gold dot stopped inside the gel block. I believe around 13 inches, I, I can't really remember, I think it was around 13 inches, and it expanded about like it does in bear gel. Uh, just perfect expansion and stopped inside of our gel block. And our second Hornady Critical Duty, after removing the denim layer, looks pretty much identical to our first Hornady Critical Duty with the denim layer. Uh, neither one of these expanded, neither one of these stopped inside the gel, and both of these went all the way through the gel block and all the way through the first water jug, and for some reason did not perform very well. However, I did bring out the Hornady Critical Duty from the four layer denim test. And as you can see, it completely expanded, flattened out quite a bit, and stopped inside of my gel block at about 13 inches, if I remember correctly. So I'm kind of perplexed on this. Uh, I assumed that the four layer denim test was gonna be tougher than the heavy clothing test that we just did today. But for some reason, the Hornady Critical Duty uh, did not perform as well in the heavy clothing test as it did in the four layer denim test. That's interesting, but like I said, uh, all three of these bullets uh, work perfectly fine in my book. This is just an experiment, you know, just kind of a, a silly test I'm doing. I'm not really, you know, putting a lot of stock into these test results. It's just fun to do and, you know, fun for me to put these up and show you guys the results. So that's about it, guys. I hope that this one was a little bit more practical and made a little bit more sense to those of you who were upset with me after the four layer denim test. Um, I didn't invent the four layer denim test and 
it is a test that's used by quite a bit of people and, and you know it does have validation in the uh, firearm industry and, and there's a lot of people that, that believe that test is, is a good test so like I said in the beginning I kind of expected these bullets to fail this test I just wanted to do a more practical clothing test for those of you who got upset with me after the denim test and said that it was kind of irrelevant. So if you guys have anything else you'd like to see, go ahead and leave a comment for me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.